Hello everyone, thanks for watching this video. Next few minutes, we'll talk about change request. A good change management decides your project's success or failure. It could be of any model of the project, changes start flowing in, right? So how do you observe the changes and how do you handle it decides, are we going to deliver it within the time, within the budget, handling the risk factors around? Now, what's the book of project management talking about change request? The book of project management or in PMP, change request has been considered as a formal proposal to make some changes on the plans, documents, process, or could be on the product, primarily on the plans and baselines. So what it is, a change request could be of a three category. If you see here, you can take change requests of corrective action, preventive action, defect repair, primarily, and updates may happen. Now, what is corrective action? The corrective action is realigning the performance of the project. For that, some requests keep coming up, a formal proposal. Then what is this preventive action? Uh, there could be a way where you have to ensure that a future performance is properly moving forward for which some change requests can come, telling that, hey, make some alignment so we move in a right direction, can happen. Defect repair, it could be on a product, a defect, a repair, a problem, a bug to be fixed can come. And some updates on the process or documents what we follow. Now this change request can come from any stakeholders in the project. Could be internal, could be external to the project at any time of the project, there is no timeline here. Now, when any stakeholders, any time request coming in, so we need to be a little cautious on handling this change request. Now, when a mutual understanding between the project team and the customer has been made, and that's called a baseline, a mutual agreement. The moment the baseline has been made, after which any request is going to be a formal request. Before that, no need to be formal. To quote an example, I'll make it a little simple here. Um, I want to buy a new Dell computer, a proper PC, a tower, right? We call it as. I'm going to a Dell showroom here and checking out with them with a the proper hard drive, um, drives, a disk, and uh, RAM capacity, a monitor, all factors I'm checking, setting up a configuration. Let's say some 30, 40 configuration checkout, and I say, let me go for this. When I'm discussing there, I have all the freedom to give all the requirements what we like. It's going to be not formal, it's going to be more of informal, right? I can just talk to them, ask them changes, all can happen. And then finally they finalize it. So this is going to be a final configuration. Are you fine with this? I'm saying fine. And we make an agreement and I give it, get an invoice, I make some advance payment and I get back to home. Good. After two days, I realize that, um, let me have something more on a graphic card. Now what I do is I go back to the um, Dell showroom again and ask them, hey, can you add the graphic card on this model and this feature? Now it is not going to be informal. And here it becomes a change request, which is of a formal request. What is a formal here? Now this person takes a request as a formal input. It could be on a paper, could be on the computer, detail they collect it. Now they want to see the feasibility, can we apply it or not? Right? Because in change requests, there are three categories of decisions going to happen. They are, one is either it can be approved, it can be deferred, or it can be rejected. It depends on the intensity of this change, how much it's going to impact. Now, the Dell configuration change, which I requested, it's going to be on the product. Actually, what I want, right? The what feature is called product. Now here, the Dell showroom person will go back and check how much of work has been completed based on that and other impacts and feasibility, whether the car can be fixed in, they tell, yes, it's possible. If not, no. So the moment I created the invoice, the moment I paid some advance, the moment I registered, it becomes a baseline, a mutual agreement. Now, any changes I put top of that, it's going to be a formal proposal. Hope you got it. Now, this is on the product side. Let's look at a little bit on the project side in the sense of how it's done. Now on the same Dell service center, I'm telling that, hey, can you please deliver this machine to this address rather than the address which I gave earlier? Now it's a slight of a process change. 
Now for this process change, there could be doable, feasible options. Now this also being considered as a change proposal, right? Here also they check out and they mean approval. Now this kind of change request is going to decide your project timeline, cost factor, risk around, resource needed, and based on that, some documents may get updated, plans may get updated, right? This is going to be a little interesting if we know the depth of the project. Now, putting back here, a change request decides a project's success or failure. It could be from any stakeholder in the project, internal or external, and also it can come anytime. Now a change request, how it works, it has three things as I said, we have a corrective, preventive, defect repair, and some documents updates also. And it could be either accepted or rejected. Whatever we do, and that information is recorded in a document called as a change log, whether it's accepted or rejected. Why? Because this information has to be communicated to the key stakeholders who ask for those changes or because of changes, they may get impacted. So we have to keep them posted. Hey, these are changes happening and that's an impact on this. And it, this change log will tell you whether it's approved or disapproved. Now you learn something called change request. You will learn something called change log. Now when the change is approved, it goes to the team which actually will do the work, the changes which is expected. For me, I say in a Dell computer, I want the graphic card to be fixed. Example, they accepted it. Now it will go to the configuration team and they, instead of putting graphic card of 1.5, they may put 1.7. It's accepted. And again, the process team, they say the address A, no, let's post it to address B. It's accepted. So that is how it works, right? So you may be from any model of the project, but a change request handling decides your project success or failure. Now, who plays a role of handling the change request? Most of the time, the project managers and sponsors play the role. At needed time, we go to core people in the team. Could be the SME, could be the core engineers who work there. We get suggestions, but decisions primarily would be made by the project manager or a sponsor or a combination of both. Thanks for watching this video. You learned something called change request in project management.